We're about to meet with one of the pioneers of the internet and new media art, who was making digital art before the term digital art came into fruition. Welcome to Art and Technology. Our next artist creates gender hacking art practices. We're going to be chatting to Shu Li Chan. Hello, Shu Li. Hello. Let's talk a bit about your work. How would you describe it? I work on more of the bio love, bio hack is the trend on my work. And from then on, I have since developed a series of bioengineering, DNA hack kind of work. At the moment, I'm creating my own bionet, which is built inside human bodies. We need to move forward. The question is, how far can we push? In order to join Bionet, you actually have to give up a lot of your orgasm data. So it's a kind of parody to what's happening today. <laughs> <laughs> what is hacking bioengineering? It sounds so futuristic to me. In the earlier times, we talk about like how to create robots, uh, create machines uh, attached to ourselves so we can function better. I think because of the biotechnology has advanced to this state, now you have synthetic technology, you have all kinds of DNA processing. The big thing in the bioscience is actually changing your whole uh, body construct. It could be so amazing if we were to biohack with care and to be able to change our physical selves for the better. Yes, I think in my new film, I'm creating a lot of transmutants, you know, so sort of, sometimes it can have glitches in changing yourself. But I think this is the kind of, I see it as the era coming in, we are mutating ourselves. Is this going to be part of our everyday lives in the next 10, 20, 30 years, where biohacking is something that we talk about in the pub? Yes, science meant fiction. So today, when we're talking about science, is it fictional? Or is fiction can become science? This, the so-called science fiction is reality. The so-called biohack is about how do we actually avoid these constant surveillance? How do we actually create a different life for ourselves? If you could be in charge of the internet and change some things that you've learned, what would be the first subject matters that you tackle? When we, a generation of that artists, first apply internet as a medium for making art, at that time, I think we have the freedom to really use this uh, medium, which actually at this moment is totally disappearing. Because today, you cannot get on any website without signing away your rights, without accepting the cookie agreement, you know, all kinds of agreements, uh, and then the pop up commercial everywhere. The, the whole scene on the internet has changed quite a bit. How embedded is the importance of access and art for all in your practice? For me to say, yes, I fall for being on the internet, I fall for uh, high bandwidth so I can really use the network. I fall for every possible access to use the network. We have come a very long way to gain access for everything, particularly as a racial minority, as a woman, as a queer person, in every step to gain access. In the earlier days, nobody ever bring in the race and gender into the debate of the technology. In terms of gender, gender hacking, meaning that at the moment, I think we are taking on to the non-binary gender concept, for example. I'm still still fighting for different assets, but maybe not for myself anymore, for example. In my science fiction film, I'm trying to create a neutral gender, a beta. We can risk creating another species, an in-between species. Neutral gen, beta? I think if you are aware of the kind of debate that's happening around race and gender, you are automatically have to go into uh, involving technology in these debates. Julie Chang, thank you so much. It's been amazing to meet you. You're a legend and I'm looking forward to part two. 
My mind is bending and I cannot wait to speak to someone as innovative and a collaborator of hers. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.